there. So let's get reflector running. Okay, reflector. We're almost there. Who is? Oh, I'm on the Wi-Fi. We'll see if this phone works or not. We'll try reflector again later. We don't really need We're to get. Oh, okay. We don't really need to get it up there. Maybe we can hide this uh, photo from the CTF. Get rid of all these other warnings. Can you hear me well on the mic also? Do you see if it's going up and down? Are you receiving me on audio? I don't like doing this because then it sounds horrible. So I got to... You get better? Oh, God. Stop. I need an update. So... Here we are. We're getting there. I think we have enough of what we need. Let's go full screen. So as we, as we move into this mobile era, if you can think back to about the mid to late 1970s, like the Altar 8800, and then all the different IBM you know, 86 models and 286 models, we're about 286 is right now with mobile devices, whether you want to believe it or not, as far as the evolution of that technology. I remember in my lifetime, and I'm not that old, but not that young, there's been so far three major turning points with technology that has changed our lives and changed everything. The first, or not the first, but from our perspective in our lives, the PC, right? Once you start bringing all that computing power into your home, it made a difference. What was the next thing? Don't say AOL. The internet. The internet made a big difference. And then it was the convergence of both of those into what we have in our pockets and backpacks now. The tablets and the mobile devices. Might seem pretty obvious, but when you think about it and how much power is in those devices and where we really are as far as the evolution of it, it's still kind of like in between like a toddler and maybe a tween. So I guess that was a pretty good example following the guy who gave the, uh, what he learned from InfoSec um, uh, about after having twins, right? And you raise your kids, you learn a lot. But that's where we are with technology. And then we're still learning a lot. And we're making a lot of those mistakes. And as we move into this era, we can't think PC. We have to think mobile first. The reason being is when people want to use an app to get content, to communicate, they're not running to their PC. They're not running to their MacBook. They're going to their tablet. They're going to their smartphone. So when I look at it, it's the smartphone is for short, quick communication. Where are you? You need to get something. Here's my tweet. Here's a photo. But then when you need to write something, it might be a couple of paragraphs in an email, you go to your tablet. But then when you actually have to sit down and do something that has greater computation power or something with graphics and media or just you want to write a book or just put a report together, you go to your regular workstation that you're used to. So we have to think mobile first. We can't think we have this malware that's out there and it's still really PC and now there's some more for Linux as of you know Thursday and then there's the Mac variants. No, we, we have to think about the mobile malware. Um, we need to have some kind of protection. Malware. Fuck. They're playing a drinking game with me. Sorry, folks. So what rule is our word? Is it adding mobile to the list? I don't the know if there's our rules. Zeus, yeah, and the word the. That's what they told me in the hallway. The word the is the one you got to drink. We might enforce that rule. So if you have anything we will add the to the list. I could just chug it all now, be shit-faced in five minutes, and it would be a real good presentation. Oh, God. So we need this protection from where on the mobile devices. Drink mobile now is the word. Oh crap. <laughs> I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Alright. I'm moving on because we don't have a lot of time. Can we let the next presenter know this this is gonna run long? Um so I'm here to talk to you more specifically about Zipmonom. But before I can get into what Zipmonom is, at least you can see the expansion of the acronym. God that's burning. Um this is why I got my chaser. You, uh, you need to understand what Zitmo is and where it came from. But in case you never heard of me before, if you don't know who I am, some of you do know me, especially the snickering dude in that first seat in column A1. Uh, 
I'm also um, somebody that put together a small group of folks in the community called Schwarznet Labs. And this is the crew. We have a sloth that does martial arts and a dude who falls asleep with a belt strap across his face. So these are the guys that are helping me so far. Um, this is my name. This is who I work for. Um, this is who I'm not. <laughs> I get confused. Sometimes they think, I don't get confused. People get confused and they think I'm him and I'm not. May he rest in peace. Great actor. Miss him. I have some certifications, so if you're wondering why the hell am I here speaking in front of you, and I decided to do something with these certifications other than try to apply for another job, I built a house. And a part of the irony of being a Hebrew, I put Santa going through the chimney. Uh, I also am the organizer of Hack for Kids. We had our first conference August 23rd of this year. It was a huge success. You can go to our website, check it out. Uh, if you want something in the local area near you, let me know, and through Twitter or whatever, and we'll try to bring one to one of your cities or contact your B-Sides organizers or somebody that I can communicate with and we can put on something fun for the kids. Ages about 8 to 17. We, for fundraising, we did a hacker timeout. So this was pretty fun where we arrested some hackers, put handcuffs on them, and put some rules around that, whether they could set themselves free um, or serve the timeout sentence. But people paid for them to be put in handcuffs, which was a lot of fun. So this was uh, Great Bay, Beltface, and Wolfgang Gorlick, who, great, as you could tell by the menacing look on his face, was one of my enforcers. I um, also am a family man, which is the reason why I do stuff with kids and technology and infosec. We have the uh, kids slash zero, ki slash kid zero, slash kid one, slash kid two, and they all have fun and doing different activities. So there's life outside of infosec and technology for you folks. You need to go find somebody and procreate, if that's your choice. <laughs> uh, I'm also an author of a kid's book to teach them some technology, so it's out there, it's on Amazon. I didn't bring any copies with me, sorry, but if you want to go get it, or even for somebody that you know who's about six to nine years old, and they're just kind of tapping stuff and swiping, and they don't really get technology, but they need to learn a little bit more, this would be perfect for them. So, or to make it's a great holiday gift, it's coming up. I'm a member of La Dosa Nostra. I don't know if you guys heard of LDN or La Dosa Nostra. Uh, just basically a crew here in the northern Midwest and um, uh, just a lot of fun people, really mainly white hat, white hat hacking, like this guy right here who got made last night who's trying to ruin my talk with booze. Malware. <laughs> I missed up that lead in. Um, I live in the city of Chicago. But if you can't tell by my accent, I'm not really from there. I'm from here. That's New York. And in no way, shape, or form am I a fan of them. <laughs> I'm from Queens. I got a head nod. Yankees fans, there's always one out there. Come on. No Yankee fans? All right, you broke the streak. So let's get into what um, we're here to really talk about besides who I am. When you look at these different mobile platforms, it was mobile. That's empty already. All right, let's go. With, let's go with the vodka Red Bull. Give me some energy. So people say, "Well, actually, let's go back up." When you look at these different platforms for these small devices, they. Um, uh, Symbian was actually a big target for a long time, and now has people have moved away from Symbian and even BlackBerry. Obviously, Android's the big target. So here's some recent percentages from uh, fine print, the Fortinet threat landscape. So the URL's down there. This this slide deck will be made available. So I'll just kind of tweet it out, or I'll send it to whoever needs to get it or whatever. So you can see these links and then look at the data yourself. But it, there there is a lot of um, malicious software on that Android platform. So let's talk about what is Zitmo. So when you think uh, Zitmo's kind of predecessor was Zeus. So you could raise your hand if you've heard of Zeus. Right, a few of you guys, right? Command and control, Windows, very interesting. Uh, there's actually some recordings. Last year I did a talk on setting up Zeus and how easy it is. It's about, you can do it about 11 minutes on a Kali Linux box. So the video is out there and you can start infecting machines and have some fun. I also did a similar talk for Gurkhan last year on how you could use Zeus for tech support. 
which was pretty fun. Um, so the platform, though, that Z uh, Zitmo runs on is, it is Symbian, it is Windows Mobile, it is Android. I do, I do... I do want to apologize for my profanity. I'm generally a very respectful and um, like mindful person, but when I'm speaking, I'm a different person. So, um, thank you, jackass. Um, so, when you start to look at uh, the, the Zeus Trojan, it's really well known for uh, injecting HTML in a web form. So if you're filling out a web form to go buy something online and then you suddenly see something like CVV code or some other information, you're like, that wasn't there the last time I was at Amazon. You got Zitmo and you need to get that off because that's what they're doing. They're grabbing it. But it does a lot of other cool and interesting things for malware, but that's one of the telling signs. Um, so Zitmo was written to be a piece of code that would go back to a command and control or C and C, much like Zeus, its predecessor, or its kind of previous, you know, uh, I guess you could say it's the the um, uh, uh, Nathan Nathanderthal to us hominids. So it's kind of like that evolution. Um, but I keep saying, um, it's you with the alcohol. Zitmo will steal your mtans and your SMS transmission. So if you don't know what an MTAN is, it's just a mobile transaction authorization number. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah, you know, let's just get the thought out before I lose it. Uh, so when you when your MTANs are stolen, so what an MTAN is is really when you're going on to do like online banking with financial services and you put in your username and password, you request the MTAN, they send it to your mobile number, you now have this kind of a one time password. Right? It's, it almost becomes like 2FA with your phone, which is great because there's something you know, your username and password is something you have, your mobile phone with a code. You enter it and you go in and it's pretty secure unless you have some malicious software that's collecting these and taking them. And somebody on the other end, a cyber criminal, not a hacker, a cyber criminal is aware of your activities because it's all going into their back end command and control, which, yeah, is starting to realize the seriousness of this. So this is what it looks like really quick. I, I have it on one of these phones here. And um, when you get it installed, it looks like something you might want, like an Android security suite. When you think of the acronym, the cyber criminals have a sense of humor as well. Thank you, sir. You got that. <laughs> I would tell you a UDP joke, but you might not get it. <laughs> um, so here's some other things that we've seen on the mobile Trojan uh, advancements. It's, it's kind of, I got to look through this just as a reference, but there was a lot of different things like using, um, you're, you're familiar with like Orbit, the Tor client on mobile devices. So they're using that now in their software to hide their traces because there's um, things like abuse.ch. Um, abuse sorry, Zeus tracker.abuse.ch is the way where you could find out about Zeus. And, and folks were doing the same kind of research with Zitmo. So, once that stuff's getting encrypted, you don't know where the command and controls are. So it makes it really hard to detect, um, especially if you're doing anything with IPS and it's encrypted. You really don't have any protection there, even especially if you're doing egress firewall filtering. I'm a big proponent of that. If you're not doing egress firewall filtering, you need to go back and put a plan together to start implementing that because shit is leaving your network that you don't know about. I appreciate the head nods. I love the support. Um, they're also, you can go to like a third party, uh, like a play store or, or app store and download this, this malware, which is mining for coin cryptocurrency on your device. Yeah, I love cryptocurrency too, but I would never run that shit on my phone. You know, I can drain this battery 15 minutes and get beautiful and and still never get anything accepted. That's the thing. It impacts your data plan. It'll kill your battery. And the longevity of your device will just become, if it's like a brand new, let's just say, well, uh, that's not my problem. <laughs> Maybe you put something in there incorrectly, but I don't know. We'll, we'll discuss that later. We'll take it offline. But the idea is if you have this stuff running and burning up your, your hardware, it's going to die quick. And these devices are not that inexpensive. They're pretty costly if you think about what they can do. Uh, so, you, you know, you want to be careful. So if you, the telling signs are the heat, your data plan, 
and the battery life just turns to shit. Um, the boot kits are also pretty clever, but pretty messed up if you're on the protection side or the defensive side of things. Because once it gets into the boot kit, you're pretty hose. I mean, you basically have to do like a firmware rewrite and you don't necessarily know if it's there. It could be there and you have no knowledge. And then if you reset your firmware from the device, it could still live in there. So you have to actually blow it all away. Um, and then, you know, the removal of all that. So then the, uh, the other thing is the rise of the remote access Trojans. That's been showing up a lot more on mobile devices. But based on the body language that I'm seeing, I'm going to move it along. So more specifically to Zitmo is the behavioral analysis of um, some of its uh, um, detection evasion tactics. So when you kind of look at the code and you decode it and you start to see, there's things in there where they're... Um, they're like doing some stuff with the URI to obfuscate it and to even encrypt the traffic. So it gets to where it needs to go, but you can't, if you have an IPS or even if you're doing some egress, filter, you're not going to see it because it's all encrypted with AES. Um, but the malware authors, because of the way they create their variants, the keys are stored in the malware. Oh, I forgot. I'm pretty good about being trolled by you. So it's stored there, and then going through the research, you're able, we're able to find the keys and then kind of look for the telling signs and know what to do and realize what to do. Uh, and then obviously the communication travels are Wi-Fi through HTTP or through the carrier through HTTP and SMS. But up there, what's being highlighted in red is the AES key that we found in one variant of uh, Zitmo. So this is what the obfuscation looks like. I wish I could zoom in a little better, but here we go. So obviously left is encrypted, right is decrypted. Um, if you're having a hard time seeing it in the back, really what you want to look at is what's red. Uh, so the left side is what's encrypted. And when we decrypted it uh, with an online AES decryptor tool, this is what we found. And it's, it's just essentially hitting a web app, which is the command and control somewhere in Poland, because this was uh, Polish malware. Because we could tell by there's, there's certain telling signs as well. People tend to leave traces, which they don't quite realize. Like when you put your phone number in there, in the malware, you do a lookup, you know where it's coming from, which country. The very bottom, it might be hard for you folks to see, on the very bottom right, we don't know what that is. Has anyone ever seen that before? It says uh, 0 ampersand, the word sign, 28 TMP, and then triple X. We just think it might be something related to the malware. So unless we like reverse engineer the command and control, which is something that we want to do and kind of rebuild it and respond to whatever its requests are and kind of give it something that it wants, will we know what it's really trying to say? Oh, I noticed the mobile iron branding is hidden. I apologize. Oh, perfect. That's all that matters. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, so let's look at the impact of this. Let's look at why is this a significant problem? Why is this material? You guys know you love your small devices that you could fit in your pocket. But how many of them are out there? So over some, um, uh, it was like a ZDNet and Gartner research showed over uh, uh, 2013, 2014, 2015 what that trend looks like. And these folks are pretty accurate. So this year, in 2014, PC sales and tablet sales are nearly neck and neck in the race. Next year, who's in the market for buying a new PC or Mac this Thanksgiving holiday sale season? I'm not. Exactly. So next year, will you be? Hell no. You're looking for some really cool tablet, regardless of the manufacturer. That's a big issue, especially if you're going to be gravitating to the Android version of it, where Zitmo likes to live. Here's some other samples. So, uh, shameless plug, I wrote for Dark Reading a while ago when I was working at Sophos, and there was some Sophos uh, Labs information about the trend of mobile malware. I'll do it in a second. Um, so, looking at about December 11th, this malware called uh, New Year L-B, started to get really popular. That's the long line. And if you start to look at that line, it kind of goes up and down a little bit. But then by the end of the calendar year, 
it nearly doubles in the amount of people who um, downloaded this and had it and was infected and detected that it was out there in the wild. So you can see it's a problem. But this kind of malware would be detected with some software on the device. Zipmonom doesn't do that. It does not need to be installed. So I'm not advocating you don't install something because obviously the malware that's very successful still needs to be detected. So if you, quick poll, raise your hand if you have an Android phone. That is, uh, oh, no, no, don't put your hand down, sir. I'm not done. So for the people who are watching along at home, it's about half of the room. Only put your hand down if you have some kind of antivirus software looking for malware. I saw about five or six, I got a half hand? About five or six people put their hand down. The rest don't have anything. So what I'm introducing to you as a tool is something that for the folks that don't have anything and they don't know if you have uh, software written to do bad things on your phone, I still owe you a drink. Um, two. Uh, this will solve that problem for you. And you have your own personal reasons why you don't install anything. But I want to be clear, I'm not advocating that you should not do that. I want you to have something to help yourself. But if you don't want to install it, and even though there's a lot of free stuff that's really good, it's your choice and you have that freedom. Now, Fortinet did some really great, well, Fortinet did some really great research specific to Android software that does really bad things on your phone. Small device that has a reduced OS footprint. Um, <laughs> it's coming with more creative ways not to say that, but, that word. Uh, I'm smarter than that, sir. Uh, I'm a CISSP. Oh, I should not say that. Um, what? Oh. Of ISC squared. <laughs> oh, I'm in my third cycle. Maybe I have three. And third cycle is assist. Let's keep the good times rolling here. Uh, so, what Fortinet detected was in the beginning of last year, there was roughly, what is it, like 50,000 versions of Android soft, bad software? <laughs> It's getting harder to use the expanded definition. Um, using software that could do some bad things to your phone and steal your data. But then by the end of the year, it increased by 400,000 samples. That's the magnitude of this problem. Even the guy who's reading the schedule to figure out where he's going next, he could fall victim to this. That's you with the red, the yellow hat, sir. That says blues. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I, I heckle back, sorry. But you didn't heckle, but you, anyway. Um, then when you look at their other research of the different types of families of bad software that could do things to your data, there's the, the, New, York, the New Year LB, which is the big line on the far left, a couple others, and then there's the SMS send family. That's the one where Zipmo lives, that's the one that we care about now because that's the one we can do something without installing any type of software locally. So for the other ones that are a bigger problem, you might want to do something about that. You decide. But it's still a material problem compared to the rest of the families. Now, we're going to look at some research. This is where it's going to get a bit down and dirty and deep. This is the good stuff. This is what DerbyCon's about. Let's get dirty. So when you look at these different permissions from the manifest XML file, Look at the crazy stuff this malware can do. You could go there. It's going to look at um, the right SMS. It's going to write your APN settings. Wake lock. So it's going to know when you lock, like when you lock the phone, it's still going to be awake. One of the telling signs of uh, malware on small devices with a small OS footprint is battery drain, crashing. So. I wrote another uh, blog article some time ago where somebody downloaded the brightest flashlight free uh, app. They had, I'm not going to name the company, they had client-based antivirus for those small devices with uh, that fit in your pocket. I owe you what? Your power choice. Fuck, I'll get to you. Mobile, 
in your uh anyway <laughs> now the alcohol's hitting it so the the they had mobile antivirus software on their phone and they still got infected so the the kind of the moral of the story there is um even when you have some protection something can still happen and that particular malware had access to all kinds of things like GPS data, Wi-Fi data. It would drain the battery. So when you look at the, the store or the market where you're getting your apps, look at the reviews, but don't look at the five and the four star reviews. Look at the one star reviews. And if you see something that looks kind of like a hairpin, that means the one stars are people that got stuck with the malware. And if it's a really big number, like this particular app with 15,000 or more people that had one star complaints, they had the malware version just like my friend did. So don't just download stuff without looking at the reviews intelligently. And the other thing I wanted, oh, I'm going to forget what I was going to say. That was three. <clears throat> it's done. Oh, God, I forgot what I was going to say. So let's look at the settings that Zipmo was going to dig into. Um, when you look at the stuff on the far right, things about if it's enabled or not, uh, when it was last sended, that's a clue of where the malware was written. They're obviously not native English speakers. And typically in Eastern Europe, that's what they put in their code. Uh, other things that are interesting, like the version, or uh, right here, I put that in there. So I saw that they had a URL, and I replaced it with something that I controlled so I could install the malware without becoming their victim. So I become my own victim. I'll get to you, Parker. So that's some of the things that they're doing. They're breaking in, they're looking at the settings, they're stealing stuff. I've got to try to move this along here. We're already running late. Um, they also put their phone number in there. So I, I took out their phone number, I put mine in there so that they don't know that I'm doing this stuff. They're also stealing stuff around your like your IMEI, you're familiar with that mobile term, your IMSI, familiar with that one. Those are very important numbers that you need to keep safe. But there's also some other stuff in there, but the, the point is they're getting this stuff and they're sharing it with themselves from you. Uh, and, and then you can see here's just the whole list. I'm going to move it along a bit quicker. But they're getting your mo your phone model. Your um, So if you have like a Samsung phone or an HTC Motorola, they're going to know what you have. They're going to know what version of Android you're running. They're going to know a lot of stuff about you that you don't want them to have. They're also storing a copy of the messages in SQLite. Think about it. So somebody sends you a text message. You receive it. What if they can't send it back out? They need to put it someplace in a temp, spot, temp space. So it is the onboard SQLite database that they use. And if you want to do some of this research on your own, that's the path. I'm moving along a little quicker. I'm trying to be respectful to the next person. So then they use this URL to report variable. Uh, what I thought was really pretty fun is the way they obfuscated it was just with regular ASCII characters. So if anyone's ever done anything, even with like Base64 or UU Encode, you, they could have been a bit more creative because the next function was the key. <laughs> just rip out all the garbage, and then the net result was to go to androidsafe.com, and then whatever that PHP file name is, I try to find out if it's a word in Polish or something, and someone said, no, it's not. But um, And then I replaced it with my own URL. Why are we... Oh, so what is Zipmo NOM? So it just stands for Zeus in the Mobile, no more. So to get rid of it, there's also a fun play on the meme of Naming. And, and that, that little thing with the teeth and the eyes, his name is Nom Nom. Uh, we, we need a mascot. So the, the idea really is to just fill that gap, as I mentioned before, for individuals who don't want any software installed on their device, but they might want to check for this type of malware. Things like New Year LB, it's just going to replace icons. It's more of a, a nuisance type of malware. It's, I usually have that effect on people. Thanks for yawning in my face. Um, it just really moves things around. It's kind of annoying, but when you're having your text messages retransmitted to someone else and that you don't know who that is and what they have, that's a serious privacy issue. So that's why I did something about this. I'm really big on data protection. Um, I, I also want to let you know that it's still in prototype. And I'm not a developer, 
I do a little stuff on my own. I'm really more of like a data protection mobile kind of guy. So I do need help. So if you really understand backend databases and, and writing code and doing malware, specifically mobile malware research, please contact me. Um, we have a URL right there, zipmonam.org forward slash join. So just fill out the quick form and I'll get back in touch with you as soon as possible. But we really do need some help of people that are, could write more secure code and have a really strong back end so that we can grow this into something that could be useful for a lot more people than just in this room. Uh, a little bit architecture, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but essentially you could use your phone, you could use your PC, you go to the website, you type in your phone number in the form, you accept the terms of service, which essentially says you're not going to sue me for this, the, the text charges because I'm, I'm not going to, I don't, it's, it's going to be pennies. Um, and that's basically it. But what happens is once you respond to that form, I'm using Twilio on the back end. If you heard of Twilio, they just have this really great RESTful API for handling text messages and other kind of uh, um, uh, advanced content like, you know, pictures and videos and stuff. The phone gets a text message, which would then act as the command and controller. So if you wanted to know, like, how does this all work? Here, here's the here's the money shot. Um, it then sends a command to the phone, and I'm going to do a demo if we have time. Sends a command to the phone. The phone responds. If the phone responds, we're going to know, based on that response, if Zipmo is there or not. If there's no response, there's no Zipmo. So you could literally open up your phone right now, and you don't have to do it on your phone. Again, you could do it on anything else. Type in zipmonom.org, type in your phone number, accept the terms of service, click the button that says NOM, and you can check whether or not you have Zipmo installed. Once it goes through that, if you do have Zipmo installed, it will respond back. Zipmo has been detected. Would you like to disable it? Reply with yes. So right now it's a capital Y-E-S. I haven't put anything else in there for the ORs and checking for other variants of yes, the word yes. But once you reply with yes, we'll send the command to disable Zipmo. Because we're not on the phone, we don't know the actual fingerprint of the malware, but we can then still turn it off so that you're safe. So that's a free service. We don't charge for this. It costs me about a penny a text. Go right ahead and use it. If you like it, send, make a donation. But if not, that's fine. You're just cool. With me. You know, we're, we're all good. <clears throat> Do I need to cut? cut? Oh, well, we're almost done. I want to thank the people that put in time. There's some logs here. We could show this. This is all still going to be on the website. Um, we're not going to get to the demo, sorry folks, but you could demo it on your own. I want to thank you very much. Apologize for going late. We had some technical issues in the beginning. Um, and go use Zipmonom and tell your friends. It's really pretty cool tool. I'm not the best developer in the world, so I really need help. I'm begging. Me love you long time. Thank you. Have a good day. And I'll finish it off. Yay.